everybody. It's uh, your friendly Canadian Spider-Man here. And uh, today I'm, I'm going to try and uh, use this uh, pork loin roast to make uh, some uh, homemade pork jerky. I've got a variety of knives here. Uh, so let's see. I think it's obvious, uh, you know, uh, which one we're going to use here. Uh, that, mm, no, maybe the machete, no. Maybe not the machete. No, we'll uh, put the machete away. Okay, um, ooh, ooh, well, well, okay. How about this, uh, this uh, Mora knife? This uh, very fine Mora knife uh, made in Sweden. And uh, that's full tang. Now that would cut the hell out of that, but I think we've got some some better options. So we'll put that we'll put that right back there. Uh, now I have been wanting to use my new uh, ugly stick uh, fillet knife, and uh, it it feels nice, you know. Um, and yeah, I bought all these. Uh, you know, these are not. Uh, promotional or anything like that uh, so I'd like to uh, find out how that one works um, it's got the nice fishing line uh, 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 notch right there that is razor sharp and meant for cutting fishing line and it's actually exposed in the sheath so that you don't even have to take it out of the sheath to cut line or I've got the standard chef knife uh, the, this precision chef knife so I don't know. I mean, this it looks like I'll do more damage to myself with this, but it's serrated, and I don't think I want to go with the serrated. So we'll put this away. Um, I am tempted, really, to, to, to use the Gerber machete. Uh, I really am. Or, or the Mora knife, because they are beautiful. As well as the ugly stick, but uh, I think we'll switch, uh, switch it up today, and, and maybe not pull out the, the big knife. There you go. So I almost knocked over Bob and Doug McKenzie's uh, barbecue there. Uh, cheers, boys. Some Merlot wine is assisting me here. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie here from the Great White North uh, TV set. Uh, I've got the, the, all the Ghostbusters are here. Uh, they're assisting me as well. Uh, the red wine is, is a big help. Uh, I've also got uh, Starfleet is here assisting. Uh, Star Wars is represented. Uh, you know, the, the Jedi, uh, Jedi are here. As well as uh, the Viper Mark II from uh, Battlestar Galactica uh, uh, is representing. And, uh, well, I am Canadian, so... Uh, you know, eh? Uh, you can't really start much without. Uh, I got this sent from mom and dad back home from New Brunswick, so thank you. You can't start much without uh, some maple syrup shots, right? Cheers. Mmm, 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 mmm. -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. Wow. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. That is very sweet. Wow. You gotta boil like a thousand gallons down to get one gallon uh, of, of this uh, maple syrup. That's the way we do it up here anyway. Pretty sure it's a thousand to one, but um, if you if you don't do it that much, it's not that thick and goldeny delicious. All right, so here is uh, for my local butcher, a, uh, a pork tenderloin. Um, pretty sure that's what that is, it's Christmas. Make sure uh, to get the pork juice, um, spread it around as much as possible, 
Well, it's good for you. Some uh, pink Himalayan salt, uh, just because it's what I had, not not because I'm trying to be trendy. And uh, yeah, let's uh, start with this. Uh, oh, we'll start with the wine. I am, yeah, just try not to touch the bits that you're going to drink with your pork hands. I mean, it's good for you, but, you know, too much of a good thing. Too much raw pork juice might not be good. So we're going to, the local butcher, he's a German guy. And uh, we're going to, he cuts, he ties them up real nice. Cuts this all in-house. So we're going to try and cut this. And I, I've had this sitting out for most of the day. So it's pretty room, room temperature-y. Which is good, and I think I think the plan here is just to cut it up into strips. Um, not hopefully not my fingers, but the meat. I'm just going to cut it up into strips. We're going to get rid of as much fat as possible. Uh, thin strips, real thin strips, right? And uh, and hang it by the wood stove. And, and I've done a practice run, and it was uh, seems successful. So I'm going to put the salt on it, cut it up into thin maybe, thin sections. Now, there's butchers out there that I'm sure are upset with things that I'm doing. But uh, I'm just trying to assess which way to cut it. And I do want to get rid of some of this fat. So apparently, when you're curing meat, you don't. You don't want the fat there, apparently. And so we're just going to trim that up and get some of that off. And, uh, well, the knife is relatively sharp. It's... Mostly user error, folks. Mostly user error. There. We'll get rid of that fat. There you go. Well, shit, why don't we just cut this? What do you think, Peter Venkman? Dr. Peter Venkman? Just cut that right down there. Yeah, why not, right? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to smell like that. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, a little more wine. And uh, hopefully I don't end up ruining a perfectly good ro uh, cut of meat. Because this is a really, it's local. It's a really nice cut of pork. Their pork is delicious. And, and you know, I hopefully just setting it out by the wood stove. You know, I'll get the wood stove cranking, and 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 I think it should work. I mean, the test run was successful. There was no spoilage of any sort. It just sort of dried out. But again, the the, the key is to remove the fat uh, without removing your fingers, and uh, cut it as thin as as possible. Is is my understanding. And so we'll try that and see if we can get it to go the same way that the test run went. Now, I've, I've had, like I said, no real training, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, but I think the, the red wine makes up for whatever training I'm lacking. Why is that red? Is that my blood or the... No, that... I think that's the animal's blood. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that's from the animal. I mean, I'm assuming it, yeah. Must have had blood in it at one point. And I'm just trying to... Boy, maybe this knife is not sharp. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's, uh... Well, screw it. Let's use the fillet knife. It's serrated. 
Hoo-hoo-hoo. And it's sharp. I don't know that serrated's the way to go. I'm sure you're yelling at me, some of you who know. That's not the right knife. Right tool for the job. Yeah, well, I'm the right tool for the job. So I think we're okay. Let's see how the... Let's see if that does it. Um, seems to be scrapey. It's very scrapey. Oop, moving the... Sorry about that, folks. Didn't mean to move the camera. Ah, uh, nah, it's bind. Now, nah, see, the serration is just binding. Yeah, I, I thought maybe it would. Um, so that is not sharp enough. That's binding with the serration. Maybe we will end up using the Gerber uh, machete. You never know. Um, all right. Well, this looks like a fun knife to use. And this is a hunting style knife, a field knife. Uh, it's a beauty. It's nice and heavy. Full tang all the way through. Um, yeah, that's really high quality plastic carbon steel. So the edge will last longer. It'll stay sharp longer. Uh, you do have to watch it from rusting. You got to oil it every once in a while, or just make sure it doesn't rust. That's the only downside to, to, uh, that I'm aware of anyway, uh, of carbon steel, as opposed to, um, stainless steel, uh, other than price. I think this was a little more expensive than the stainless steel in, in this particular knife's case. But uh, again, uh, things change all the time, so don't quote me on that. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't want to get too picky here. But, I mean, that's, that's a lot of the fat off. So I think we're going to... And it is fairly late, so I don't want to be here all night. Uh, mind you, I have the wine to do so. If, if that's what it takes, folks, then that is what I'll do. Get rid of the fat. Oh, yeah, I really need to practice my knife skills. Wonder why it takes me so long to cook dinner. Hmm, not really a wonder, is it? And I've had professional chef friends teach me some knife skills, but uh, again, it's all in the practice, right? It's all in the practice. There we go. Now let's cut this into strips shall we yes i think we shall ho 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 move this out of the way there we go. Here, uh, are you getting a reading on that? Yeah, see if you can get a reading on that. Egon, please and thank you. Why, are, why is that jerky? That shouldn't be jerky. That motion should be, yeah, more like that. Put some weight on it. Make sure that everything under the blade is of the pork variety and not of the Canadian Spidey variety. I'm not sure if I would make good jerky or not. I'm very. You know, I would think very 
tough meat, but there, that's, that should just sit right over the fireplace and dry out in time. There's a little bit of a thickness to that. So in order so that it dries, I'm going to just slice it open so that it uh, isn't so thick and it will hopefully cure uh, quicker. Maybe do the same to that. You don't, you know, you want this to to cure quickly uh, over the uh, wood stove. So uh, there is some meat there, but that's going to be. Oh no, I can I can trim some of that up. I can trim some of that up. There we go. Separating the meat from the fat. And uh, I'll have to research why it's not well advised to, to, to have fat on the meat that you're curing. Um, perhaps it, it doesn't cure properly. It's too slow in curing and it becomes uh, rotten. I, I'm not sure. I probably learned that information and it is escaping me at the moment, but uh, I don't want the fat on there anyway, not too much. I mean, pork is a fairly fatty animal anyway, in my experience, so it doesn't hurt to trim it up some. And uh, the trim ends here. Uh, yeah, I'll probably, I don't know, make a stir fry or something with a bit of that. Or, shit, will I be able to get another piece out of that? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, she said. Ha. Me, the boy, the two droids, no questions asked. Ooh, really kinky. You came in that thing. You're braver than I thought, is what he said. I'll leave that. To... There we go. Okay. Now, um, there. I, I think. I think that's gonna work. As far as some credible. Strips of pork. Uh, I'm gonna slice this. I'm gonna slice this because it is a little thick and I don't think it'll dry. I think it might go bad before it dried out in time if I left it like that. So I'm gonna cut it uh, not completely through because I don't want two separate pieces, but I am gonna cut it so that it folds down and becomes longer. And then I'll just make sure that any thick parts. Are, are cut and thinned and spread apart so that they will cure out, like I said, uh, quick enough so as not to go bad. And that part there is mostly fat, so I'm going to get rid of that. Mostly fat. And I think we're left with some good meat with a little bit of fat connect as connective tissue so that it doesn't fall apart and i and i just want long strips uh one they're long and thin so that it dries properly and you get back on there and then uh two so that uh it doesn't take up a lot of space on on the on the sort of clothesline i've I've fashioned over the, the wood stove. You know, there's not a, a lot of space there. It's a fairly big roast. Uh, I think this was probably a $25 roast, Canadian. So, uh, yeah, it's it's good size. That's what she said. Uh, and, yeah, I'm just going to uh, hang it right over the wood stove in the line that I've got 
So I want to keep the pieces uh, thin and long to facilitate hanging the most meat possible. And let's see if I can cut my fingers off. I think I'm, you know, probably going to accomplish that before this is over. Um, safety wine um, will help. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was using pepper earlier, so a bit of it got in my nose. My apologies. Dr. Venkman, I, I appoint you safety officer. All right. Uh, Egon Spencer, uh, Spengler is busy. You know, uh, and uh, Winston, you can be the uh, the safety watch. Okay. Dr. Venkman, you're, you're overall responsible because you're that kind of a guy, but uh, Winston, I'll have you appoint a direct safety watch, okay? Because uh, I think you'll speak up if you see anything. That is too small to hang, so I'm gonna cook that with eggs or something tomorrow. Or at this rate, at, by the time I finish this, it'll be time for eggs, folks. And so now always, it, you know, in a stabbing motion, um, towards the center of chest, right? You always hear center of mass, center of mass. So always um, in, a, in, a, in a jerky stabbing motion towards center of mass, right? That's what they always say, right? Make sure you do that. Um, safety first. Boy, that. Yeah, okay, I guess. The fat is smelling a little off. And I think it is the fat. Uh, not off. No, that's not right. Not off, but just you can tell it's been sitting out, uh, you know, getting up to room temperature. Um, and and it's, it's the fat that I think is where a little bit of that um, s uh, smell is coming from. It's not a bad smell, but uh, so that is maybe another a testament to why you want to cut the fat off, which is I'm attempting to separate the meat from the fat, right? And uh, yeah, always cut, you know, across your body. Make sure to uh, follow safety principles. All right. There we go. There we go. I feel better. Look at that. That's some. Serious weight loss. Just the fat is melting away. Just like using the shake weight. For those of you who remember that. Wonderful exercise tool. That was someone made a lot of money on that. They, just for the comic value, like the balls on that person. Whoever invented that and actually made it work and, and invested in it to make it a real thing. Wow. My hat is off to you, sir, or and or madame, whatever the case may be. That is a little bit of sinew that can get cut off. All right. There we go. Get rid of that and continue processing this. Get rid of that fat right there. Right across the grain, across the grain into nice thin strips. Right, look at that. Look at that, folks. Oh, 
Yeah, there we go. Boy, this is going to take a while, hey? Good thing we got a whole four liter box of wine, folks. Okay. That one's a little thick at the end. So in order to make sure it dries properly, we're just going to slice it and just open it up a bit, spread it out, you know. It's uh, pretty tough. You know, it, it, it'll stretch quite a bit before it'll break. <laughs> that is definitely what she said. Okay, here we go. I'll just get rid of this. This looks mostly like a tendon. Not really something that... I, I don't know. There's probably nutritional value in tendons. But uh, we've got enough. We don't need that bit. Uh, I'm sure eating tendon is probably... I mean, there's a reason that many of the Asian places that I've been to partake in the old uh, eating of the tendons and all the other cartilage type. Uh, and you're saying, well, yeah, they're third world countries. Of course they'll eat that shit. They eat whatever they can get their hands on. Well, no, uh, Japan is one place, I think, where I noticed the eating of, of chicken cartilage on skewers uh, was predominant in, in the posh grocery stores as well as... You know, they have posh department stores, have grocery stores sometimes in the bottom floors there. And, and it's the prices are a lot more expensive, but you get to walk around with the status symbol of having that department store bag uh, is where you shop for your groceries. Wow, that's a status symbol. And uh, so there you can go in and even there in the posh places, uh, not not. Uh, the, the people that can't afford it, the good meat, uh, you can find a uh, cartilage. And I've had it. It's basically a vehicle for whatever sauce you put on it. But I'm sure there's, uh, you know, there's a belief that there's some sort of health benefit to eating the cartilage, I'm sure. You know, it makes some sort of sense that it would facilitate you repairing your own cartilage. But hey, I'm not a, I mean, well, am I a doctor? Uh, I don't know. Am I? You tell me. I'm uh, certainly not a professional butcher. That is uh, not something I can hide. Oh yeah, there we go. I do like this knife. It's it's weighty. It's it's an, a nice length. Uh, that is there any good meat? Oh yeah, there's a strip there. You know, it is a decent length for for doing what I'm doing here. Wow, a lot of that is meat. Wow, okay. Very fatty meat, but uh, nonetheless, it is meat. Get rid of that bit right there, I think. That's a little extra. Mm, yeah, that's a little more fat than uh, I want on my plate. There. Wow, I really need some better knife skills. That is no shit, eh? Now that, I can't really incorporate that into a strip, so I'll, again, cook that for breakfast. Might as well Get rid of that while I'm at it. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, donkey. I do not do impressions. I am no Rich Little. For those of you too young to know Rich Little, I'm no Doomcock. Ooh, am I doing cock? Ooh, you never know. You never know, do you, Captain? Hmm, Cardinal knows. 
or does he? There we go. So I'm just separating this. I think I can get a strip of meat. Yes, out of that. Without cutting myself. So far, so good. I should stop saying that. It's keep being smart ass. Yeah. Nothing bad has ever come of anyone filming stuff on and being smart ass on YouTube, right? That's not a thing. I'm sure. You couldn't find any videos like that where people were saying silly things and then the very thing they were saying happened. All right, there. Now that uh, there's a little bit of fat in there, but that's uh, yeah, holding the rest of the meat on. So I'm going to leave that, get rid of this stuff. Let's get rid of that fat. Get rid of that finger. I don't need that there. Okay. And we're just going to, yeah, I think we're going to. Slice that right through so that becomes a nice long strip. And then this is pretty thick. So I think I can get away with cutting it right down the middle and then lengthening that out. And that'll just sit right over the, the, the uh, clothesline just like that. And it'll hang and it'll dry. Now this stuff, there's some... That's a good hunk of roast there, eh? Look at that. Does that fat run all the way through? Maybe it does. What am I doing to this meat? Oh my God. That is definitely, again, what she said. Um, I think I can separate that. It looks like it wants to separate there. Right, what do you guys think? Yeah, it looks... Meat talks to you, right? Does it want to separate there? I don't know. Boy, I'm just going to slice the shit out of my finger. Probably won't even notice this is so sharp. Does that want to separate there? Maybe. Well, I think it does. Fuck it. I'm sure it does. Yeah. It looks like it does. I think there's a, yeah. Right there. That's what we're trying to get at, folks. Open this meat right up. Cut it into strips, separating the fat as we go. Wow, I am just destroying this piece of meat. Well, that's how you learn, right? That's how you learn these things. I'm sure uh, Napoleon didn't, uh, you know, pick up a piece of meat and, and butcher it and was a professional the first time, you know. Same with Shakespeare. Um, you know, they probably butchered uh, lots of meat figuratively oh yeah I like that knife that it feels sturdy it feels uh, there's weight to it like I've been saying it it's, feels like it's got some quality to it and uh, I'm happy with the purchase I think this was 140 Canadian, something like that. Uh, I'll leave that there. Something like that. Yeah, so it's a, a lifetime knife, right? Um, I, won't, <laughs> I don't have any kids to hand this down to, but uh, I don't plan on dying. So that sort of works out. I might, you know go through life without all my fingers at one point, but I don't plan on dying, really. Not really. 
And if I do, I just might take this knife with me, because this is a nice knife. I'll need it where I'm going, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. That's where all my friends are, anyway. <laughs> all right. So... That meat's looking pretty good. So now, uh, how are we going to attack this? And I do mean attack. Um, do we cut it in thin slices this way? That might be a good option. Or do I continue with the lengthways? Ah, huh, that's... Well, shit. I, I think maybe this way. Because if I was doing a roast, this would be the way that I would cut it. So we're just going to try real thin. And normally this chef knife would be better. It's a bigger size and it's designed for exactly this. Yeah, I like that. Different jerkies. You know, this is your strip jerky and and that's your uh, uh, you know, that's your, your uh, sheet. Sheet. I don't mean shit. I mean sheet jerky. It's a sheet of jerky. And that's your strip, uh, folks. Right, so there you go. So we'll, uh, we're making uh, sheet jerky now. Well, not without wine, we're not. Dr. Venkman, you're supposed to be the safety officer. You failed to warn me that I was down on wine. Red wine levels getting low. Okay. And there's uh, some more sheet pork that will hang over the wire the, the wire the, the clothesline that I've got uh, hanging and, and fashioned and attached above the wood stove here right behind me so I'll just ooh, see this is going this is I'm able to get that pretty thin that this is a really nice knife I'm able to do that um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And it's it's going relatively quickly. I'm I'm able to process this uh fairly rapidly, I think. Uh because I don't want to be here uh with more pork left and no wine left. So that's not what we want. And that will hang as well. Um or if I could find ooh, I could take the rack out of the oven. The electric oven and I could uh, hang these on the rack uh, and hang that over this uh, wood stove is also something that I could do if I don't have enough room on the line or, or if I have any difficulty hanging uh, these uh, the, the sheet pork and you know if the sheet pork won't hang on the line and we will break out the old rack from the oven and and, and hang it over that You hear that, pork? We have a plan. Uh, it is really warm in here with that wood stove going. Um, can't take off a lot more clothing. There we go. Just keep slicing that up. Boy, I really need to practice smooth slicing motions. And this is why our bigger knife, I think, would help. I mean, this is a sharp knife, so I don't know what that is. And the other thing I think what I'll do is the, this uh, pork, before I hang it, what I did last time, uh, and that seemed to work, uh, was to pound it, um, sort of beat my meat, if you will. And you beat it, and that flattens it out and thins it out so that it's able to cure even faster. And, and basically, the curing process, as I understand it, is basically all the the, the moisture, the, the water, um, evaporating out, drying out of the meat. Um, and the, the moisture is where the bacteria like to grow. So if you dry it quick and they, quickly enough for the bacteria to grow, 
or, you know, I mean, some bacteria is probably good for you, right? Build up your immunity, right? We all want good, healthy immunity. Uh, that's why I make sure to eat my fair share of bacteria. And that is why I've never really I've been sick in my adult life. Even though I did catch the, the you know, the, the bug that's going around that everyone knows about. I'm pretty sure I was exposed to that multiple, multiple, multiple times. I know I was. Uh, from people that have been tested around me in my circle. And, uh, yes, I, so far my immunity has helped me because I make sure to eat lots of bacteria. So, you know, make sure to, I mean, you want to make sure that you, you dry this quickly as possible and cut it really thin to get the moisture out so the bacteria don't, doesn't grow. But you also want to make sure that you are eating your uh, daily recommended dose of bacteria to boost your immune system, right? I mean, shit. Um, best thing I ever did to help my immune system, I think, was um, eat uh, street meat right off of the the main uh, train platform in the Berlin train station. Um, you know, I never felt healthier after doing that. Yeah, the sucker rolled all over the platform. The train was leaving. I didn't have any time to get another one, so... It was that meat or nothing. And, uh, yeah, did me fine. I, I just felt a surge of healthiness after eating that. The immune system was just booming. You know, again, everything in moderation, including wine. Thank you, Egon. Appreciate the tip. Uh, Ray, you doing good? Careful with that thing, Ray. And this, uh, what are we going to do with that? That will cut into a strip. I think that's the right shape for a strip. Wouldn't you say? Huh? Mr. Zedemore? That looks like a strip to me, hey? And then this thing... We'll open this up and hang it like so after I uh, will uh, pound them flat, uh, salt them. That's probably not enough salt, but I have more. Pound them flat. Uh, I'll move the, the team of Ghostbusters back so and the Starships back so that I don't splat them with meat. Uh, I am convinced that pounding it does facilitate uh, the drying out procedure because it makes, you know, it, ex it expands the surface area, right? So the moisture leaves the meat quicker so that it, it'll uh, dry out quicker and, and before it gets a chance to spoil. That's, you know, I think that's the process and, and, and just common sense or my, you know, my experience uh, dealing with this sort of thing tells me that that's maybe what's going on. But again, I'm not a professional butcher, as is very apparent, I'm sure. Yeah, professional butchers, man. Those guys are and girls are always uh, in demand around here because hunting is popular. We love to shoot uh, our own meat. And, you know, this meat is local. I didn't shoot it, but I know the guy that did this, this pig. You know, I can ask him how it was dispatched. And there we go. Get rid of this fat. So, yeah, the butchers, butchers are always in, in work, you know. I would imagine there that is one trade in my travels around, too, in, you know, Australia. And uh, places where I could read the job advertisements anyway, you know, uh, places where I've lived and maybe have gone job searching myself, something that I've noticed in the want ads are, you know, no matter what, you know, what part of Canada or what part of Australia even, or even the U.S. Uh, oh, yeah. You, you see advertisements, uh, jobs for, for people that know how to, butcher animals so i'm sure you could 
survive on just doing game animals in my neighborhood right around here, you know, for a few months a year and then spend the rest of the year frugally just living on what you've made. Uh, I, I think there's a demand for it. You'd be working in, insane hours for that, you know, few months, but then you could just take your time and take the rest of it off. Man, you know, although then there's people always butchering, butchering their own farm animals. So they, you know, that happens all time of year, uh, you know, I guess to some degree, you know. But And, and it would certainly uh, speed this process up. If I knew what I was doing, we would uh, be drinking another glass of wine by now. I'm sure. Boy, I'm just murdering this thing. I'm just that, it, but it look that looks like this color of meat is, is is a lighter color, and that is a darker color. So, um, and it looks like they want to separate a little bit. Maybe they don't. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. Do they? Well, it is uh, the year 2021. COVID is in the air. There's lots of separating going on. So, no, you know what? That's not, I don't want to fight it. It doesn't seem to want to. I, that is a, there is um, a division here that I can see between the, the two different types of meat. Yeah, and the tendon runs right between it. Yeah, I can totally feel that. But am I going to be able to remove it? Ah! Like I said, always towards yourself. <clears throat> yeah, I might be able to remove that. Get rid of that tendon. That does not need to be in there. Uh, that as well does not need to be in there. I'm just going to follow the fat line. The fat line seems to be dividing these two types of meat, the darker and the lighter. So we're just going to pull that right out and see if we can really massacre this uh, beautiful cut of meat. Yeah, I think we're doing a really good job of butchering it is the right uh, descriptor here. Yeah, no joke. All right. And why? As a friend of mine likes to say, because it's fun, Janice. All right. More wine. Yeah, good idea. Thanks. Thanks, Egon. Okay. Cut that into strips. Is that the right way? Am I going cross grain? I think I am. I think I'm going cross grain there. Yeah, that seems to be it. Seems to be the key. Yeah, that's almost uh, one of those. Okay, and that's a now that's a strip as well. Excuse me, just a second. go that will make things better now I should also get 
I don't have a rolling pin to flatten this meat, or I don't have a... I mean, I'd, I normally just pound the meat by hand, as you can imagine. But uh, I think I've got a whiskey ball that will that'll work. Oh yeah, there's some nice strips there. Nice strips, beauty. And that's uh, some more fat that doesn't need to be there, really. You know, if you can get rid of that, that's always a good idea. In general, let's get rid of that. We'll just pull it, pull it right out. There you go. It's no easy way to do that. I'm sure there is. Again, I'm not a professional. I mean, there are some things I'm professional at, uh, butchering, uh, butchering things other than language is not really my forte. I certainly do a pretty good job of butchering a few different languages. In fact, butcher the shit out of those. And yeah, I'm definitely maybe butcher is the appropriate term here. It does seem to be an accurate description of what's taking place here. There, we're just uh, that's as good as she's gonna get. Apparently, f cutting through fat dulls your knives. Um, I read that somewhere, or someone told me that somewhere. Okay, so uh, we're going to let that hang, thin that out. Right, there's a thin strip there, and there's another one. Doesn't take much to uh, keep the, the, the pieces of meat intact. Like, you'll see just a little thread of, of meat maybe attaching some of these pieces, and uh, that's fine. That, that'll, that'll dry just as is. It, you know, from what I've seen, it won't uh, break or, or fall or, you know, dry out to nothing. It, uh, it really doesn't take much more than just a thread of meat to, to keep these things uh, together so that they're easier to, to work with and to hang, I guess, really is what we're going for here. That is not pretty, but it, you know what? That is not a requirement. Pretty is not a requirement. Um, edible. I would think would be the, the biggest uh, thing we're striving here for. And tasty would be, an, you know, a nice addition to that. Um, something that is, is able to store for months and months on end is the goal. And I think uh, we're pretty near there. I mean, that's a good... Bit of meat, folks. And yes, that is what she said. She says a lot around here. And this bachelor pad, she says that a lot. Alrighty. Yes, that will come right off. Uh huh. Boy, that's just, I'm not doing that right at all. I mean, yeah, I'm basically just scraping caveman style here. Ugh! Ugh, make steaks. 
And that was very offensive to all of the Neanderthal cavemen that might be watching the channel. Uh, I'm not sorry. Uh, suck it up, buttercup. That's my approach on that. Okay. Now let's continue making an absolute tragedy of this uh, wonderfully uh, prepared uh, tenderloin roast. It was wonderful until I got my hands on it. <clears throat> oh, shit, I'm forgetting to cut towards myself again. Right. So it really is safety first uh, in regards to that. Okay. Absolutely want to get this hung and stoke up that fire as quickly as possible because it's already been uh, way too long me trying to process this and I use that term lightly uh, this particular meat so um, it needs to be hung in front of the fire ASAP Yes, I think that is the, the approach we will take. Wow, I just friggin' destroyed that. Holy shit. All right. I want to do long strippies. Maybe, maybe I do. Yeah, let's see if I can just massacre this just a little bit more. That's a nice strip. Hmm. Ah, that's pretty, pretty sheet. Uh, 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 okay, what do we got? That's separated. Okay, that was unexpected separation. There we have saucer separation. But uh, I think we can work with that. We'll just. Make sure that it's thin. I don't think we need that. And that will lay out fairly thin and dry fairly quickly, I think. And that's a relatively thick piece, so I'm just going to slice it to uh, separate some of that thickness, get the surface area, um, more th surface area so it'll dry out quicker by the stove and dry quickly so as not to prevent too much bacteria from going in. I mean, you know, of course we want some, you know, we're not, we're not wussies around here. All right. Do wussies have knives like this? No. No, they do not. And they certainly don't have 25 inch long machetes. Or, or maybe they do. I, I don't know. Don't know. All right. So I'm pretty happy with that. Get the wine going. Oh, yeah.